Hi, everyone. Uh, welcome to another edition here of the Coffee Mug Webinars, where we share marketing tips for Marketo users. As you know, today we'll be discussing best practices for syncing Microsoft Dynamics to Marketo. Um, but before we jump into it, just a couple quick notes. Uh, of course, um, today's presentation will be recorded, so um, you don't need to take notes or anything like that. We'll send out a presentation as well as the slide deck at the end. And most importantly, um, we did have a question box on registration. So lots of people submitted questions. We will be taking those questions at the end. Uh, similarly, if anything comes up during the presentation that you have a question about or just curious, um, tap on the uh, chat box and type it in there and we'll try and get to them all at the end. Uh, for those of you who don't know us, uh, Percuto, we help leading brands orchestrate memorable customer experiences through flawless marketing operations. Um, we're, we have a presence pretty much throughout the world. We're based in headquarters in Montreal, Quebec, Canada. Uh, got about 40 to 50 employees these days, and we are um, partners with Marketo, Visible, Adobe, and Microsoft. Uh, today, to introduce our speakers, we are overrun with experts today. We have Hilary German and Lindsay Kahn, both Marketo Certified Solutions Architects. Um, a little bit about them. Lindsay is actually the world's first Marketo Solutions Architect. Um, she's passionate about helping companies gain insight into their marketing initiatives and surpassing their goals. Hillary is a senior consultant at Percuto. Uh, she's also, as I mentioned, MCSA, has her MCE, and an MBA in marketing. Um, and uh, she is a jack of all trades, creative and entrepreneurial marketer turned consultant with a background in digital marketing, communications, and graphic design. And also, as you can see in the pictures there, some personal notes about them. So uh, without further ado, um, that's it from me. I am your moderator. My name is Jordan, forgot to introduce myself. Sorry about that. Um, but Hillary, um, I'll give the controls to you now and you can take over. Great, thank you, Jordan. Yeah, just be a minute there as we transfer it. Should have it now. All right, so first I am happy to be here today. Hi, everyone. I wanted to start by going over the poll results from the poll that you were asked at the beginning when you registered for this webinar. So we asked what your biggest challenge in syncing dynamics to Marketo is. And 24% said duplicate records, 2% said incorrect field mapping, 8% speed of sync, 24% all of the above, and then 42% said other. So we're really curious for anyone that said other, would you mind submitting in the chat what other issues and challenges that you were having are? That would be great if you could do that now. And if not, I'm sure we'll address some of them in the Q&A period as well. Okay, so going through the Marketo community and also talking to clients here that we work with at Percuto, we hear common challenges that people have when trying to sync between Dynamics and Marketo. And these are just some quotes that I found. So we recently ran into a sync issue that has resulted in almost 55 thousand duplicate leads having imported to Marketo that weren't supposed to. Hundreds of duplicates created by the sync. Any advice? We've been experiencing up to 40 minutes for a sync. The sync is very slow. Sometimes it takes two to three hours. I keep getting a field custom validation exception error and the data in our CRM doesn't match what's in Marketo. So as you can see, these are common problems and we're here today to address them. These common challenges can be really grouped into field management, duplicates, and then slow performance. 
And when you address these issues with your sync between Marketo and Dynamics, you can expect to achieve data harmony. So this gives you some ideas of what you can achieve with data harmony, like sending prioritized leads to each sales rep, attributing pipeline and revenue to marketing campaigns, experiencing that super fast data sync, and streamlining the most tedious of workflows. Everything with this is all about saving time and really allowing you to focus on your most important marketing activities. So now I'll begin by explaining the sync between Marketo and Microsoft Dynamics, because with a good understanding of how the sync works, we can then address the issues. So Marketo can only sync to one and only one Microsoft Dynamics CRM instance through the na native connector. And this connection is permanent. And this reminded me of Avatar. If you're an Avatar fan, you might remember in the movie how Avatar is synced to the flying banshees in the mountains. And once that sync is made, it's made for life. So I think of the CRM dynamics to Marketo just like that. And once this record is synced between the two systems, Marketo maintains data consistency using a periodic sync. So what is this periodic sync? Well, what happens is the first time that the two systems are synced together, it takes a long time because that's a lot of data to exchange between the two. But then after the initial sync occurs, Marketo checks for updates on the records and then synchronizes the data between both systems. So you can see approximately every five minutes, there'll be a wait and then it will sync again and sync again. And this sync time is dependent on data volume, but we found that the average throughput is 10 to 20,000 records per hour. And something interesting in Marketo when you use Dynamics is that being able to see the sync status screen. So we recommend that you access this in the admin section and check how your sync is running. And you can see if there's any errors here and you can see if there's a big backlog. It's important to monitor this to make sure your data is being updated quickly. So how does uh, Marketo record sync to Dynamics? Well, it must pass through a sync person to a Microsoft flow step. And that's what the flow step looks like here. And once that record is synced, it is kept in sync automatically from then on. And it's important to keep this process synchronized, centralized. And we'll have more information on this later. And then how does a Dynamics record sync to Marketo? So any record Marketo has access to that is in Dynamics will automatically sync. And it can be restricted with a custom sync filter if necessary. So you are able to set up a sync to Marketo checkbox field in Dynamics. And then if this checkbox is selected, only those records will sync between the two systems. Something interesting as well is that when you look in Marketo, you're able to see all the fields in this great view to be able to select which ones you want to sync on the different entities like lead, contact, account, and opportunity. And that's the screenshot we're looking at here. So now I'll pass it to Lindsay who will address the tips, give you tips to address these common sync challenges. Thank you, Hillary. All right, so some of the common sync challenges, um, as discussed earlier, um, we have a variety of different tips to help people mitigate those uh, those common sync issues, and also just 
you know, standard best practices that uh, we recommend from a data model perspective when working with Dynamics and Marketo. So one of the first things that we always recommend doing is creating a data dictionary, which is essentially a list of your fields in Dynamics and Marketo, and then documenting the relationship between the fields and the systems that can update them. So you can see a screenshot here, and this is uh, similar to what the data model document, um, or the, sorry, the data dictionary document that we use at Percuto looks like. So you would have your the name of your Marketo field, um, if there's a description or a few words about what the field does or how it's used, the type of field it is. So is it a text field, string field, Boolean field, date time field, the label for the field in Dynamics, as well as the API name for the field. And then um, if it's on, like if it is uh, on the lead, the contact, the account, the opportunity, um, and then the permission. So the other piece as well is to document which, um, which systems can actually update those fields. So for example, here on a field by field basis, you're able to select which sources can update those fields. And an update is once there's a value in there, um, uh, filling in the field. So it doesn't necessarily mean going from empty to a value. It means going from one value to the next. One of the things that's really important about data dictionaries is that, um, especially if you're using a third party tool to connect Marketo and Dynamics, um, as you saw in the screenshot that Hillary was speaking to about the field mapping section, um, in the field management section in Marketo, you're able to see uh, when you click into a field name, you're able to see if it is mapped to Dynamics and then what the mapping is. However, if you're using a third party tool to connect Marketo and Dynamics, you can't see the mapping at that level. So a data dictionary becomes really, really important because you can list out what the mapping should be and also perhaps even use the description field on the feed. So um, when you have the field name in the field management section, there's a description box, like you would have a description for a smart campaign or a smart list and perhaps maybe note what the mapping is in the description area. And then that way you have an at a glance view of seeing it to make up for the fact that you can't necessarily see the map thing as you would when using the native connector. Um, but data dictionaries, always important, especially important if you're not using the native connector. Now, as Hillary mentioned earlier, the average throughput of field of record processing in Marketo is about 20,000 records per hour. However, that number will fluctuate based on how much data is being synced between the two systems or how many updates are happening. So if you're doing your initial sync of records, you would expect that that throughput is actually a little bit lower uh, simply because you're doing that initial load of many records and a lot of data on those records. Whenever people are in the system and they're being updated over time, if you have a lot of different information transferring between the two systems, it will also decrease the throughput time. So one of the things that you will want to do is be selective with your fields in order to keep the data flowing quickly. Um, it's important to note that you may have certain data points that you need in Dynamics. You may have some that you only need in Marketo, and then you have some data points that you need to have in both systems, and they have to be aligned in both systems because you're using those fields to determine your audiences for smart lists or certain campaigns. Um, so really think through which fields, which information actually needs to live in both systems when going through the field mapping exercise. Another thing worth noting is that if there is a new data point that you want to capture and you need the data in both Dynamics and Marketo, any of those new custom fields, we recommend creating them in Dynamics first because then Marketo will inherit the schema from, from Dynamics and then you can sync that field down. However, if you create a custom field in Marketo, it can't be mapped out of like out of the box to Dynamics. You'd have to get Marketo Professional Services involved to have the field field mapping um, happen, and that takes a bit more time. It takes additional resources, additional fees. So if you have any data points that are custom, 
that you want to track in both systems, we highly recommend creating those fields in Dynamics first and then syncing them down to Marketo. Managing duplicates. So as we saw in the poll results earlier, this is a big concern for a lot of people. Um, I think it's also something that is a large concern whether or not you're using Dynamics as your CRM and Marketo. One of the things that we often see that can lead to the creation of duplicates is the decision to sync only a certain number or certain uh, records that have reached a certain status or that are perhaps your MQLs, your people that are ready uh, for sales. Now, what we typically recommend as a way of trying to prevent duplicates from happening is to do what we refer to as a one-to-one -one sync or a complete sync of all the records. Um, the way that Dynamics will look. So say, for example, you have a record that's in Dynamics, that record has not synced down to Marketo. That person fills out a Marketo form. They're now in Marketo, but they don't, uh, when that person syncs to Dynamics, because that record that was created through the Marketo form fill inside of Marketo, because it doesn't have a uh, Dynamics GUID for like if it's a lead or a contact, it doesn't have that lookup value, the GUID value. Dynamics sees that as a different person than the person with the email at, with that same email address that's already in Dynamics. So that's how the duplicates get created and so on. Um, so same thing if um, if the person was in Dynamics and in Marketo, but then synced from Dynamics, the same thing could happen. Um, so it's important to have all of your records sync. Now, a lot of people will say, well, I don't want sales to be able to see these people. So one of the ways potentially around this is to be able to sync all of the people, have kind of um, maybe like a queue or a user that is dedicated to holding those records so that they don't get routed to the sales team. So any of your early stage prospects or people that you don't necessarily want people um, or, or your sales reps to be contacting, sync them over, but assign them to the user or the queue that would serve as this holding room for those records, and then have uh, the assignment rules in Dynamics um, listen for certain updates that would indicate that that person is now qualified to be rerouted to the correct person because they now meet the defined set of requirements. When merging records, you should merge your leads in Dynamics. Merging is better than deleting because you're able to keep uh, various information points and conserve the history for page visits, link clicks, email opens, um, any of that activity history that is still on the record. Um, you'll be able to maintain that as opposed to having it completely, um, completely wiped out. Marketo does not support the deletion or merging of records from Dynamics within the Marketo UI itself. So if you were to try to merge someone in on the Marketo side, that merge would not um, would not happen. It would not um, would not pass over either into Dynamics, which is why we recommend using the merge function um, in Dynamics. For a few, for leads that are also synced to Dynamics, um, you would have to do the deletion and merging in Dynamics, and then make sure that, um, so the winning record, you would have to then locate it in Marketo, also locate the record that is no longer um, being used, and then you can delete that record on the Marketo side, because now instead of having the two records, there's just the one. So you would then be able to get rid of um, the record that is no longer in use, that is synced down to Marketo, um, by, by locating that record and then deleting it. And then in terms of deleting records, so if you delete someone in Dynamics, it does not delete them in Marketo and vice versa. So here you'll see the delete person flow step and what you'll actually see is that the remove from CRM is actually grayed out here. So if someone is using Salesforce, it's possible to delete the person from Dynamic, or sorry, from Marketo and Salesforce at the same time. However, um, if you are in a Dynamics environment, you cannot delete the person from Dynamics from within Marketo. Personally, I think that this is a good thing because it avoids the fact, it avoids um, put someone potentially deleting records that shouldn't have been deleted out of Dynamics. Uh, so personally, I think that this is a good thing. 
some tips for reducing slow performance. So some of the things that we recommend are centralizing your sync campaigns. We've entered instances before where we've seen the sync to dynamics flow steps used in a variety of different campaigns. And then we end up uh, receiving questions such as, um, why was this person synced to this user and not that user? They should be going to this person. Um, different things happening like that. What we recommend is centralizing these campaigns into a single program. So if you are using a one-to-one -one sync and having everyone sync between the two systems, if a record is created in Dynamics, it will automatically sync down to Marketo as long as there is no um, sync to Marketo field um, being used or that sync filter is not um, in place. Or some people have a sync filter set up, but they're not what I would refer to as actively using the sync filter. They have it in case they need it later, or they have it because they wanted to control the flow of records entering the system when they were doing the initial sync. And so um, if the sync field then is always set to, to yes, then um, technically you're not really preventing anyone from syncing down. So if you have people that are created in Dynamics, they will automatically sync down to Marketo. That is not the case in the opposite direction. So any records that are created through Marketo, through list imports or form fills, APIs connected to Marketo, anything like that, they have to have their sync forced to Dynamics. And so um, either you would have something like a smart campaign triggered off of simply person is created, and then also maybe drag in the fact that the Microsoft type needs to be empty. Um, you could also put constraints on the source to say that they're created through any source except for Dynamics because those people have already synced um, and they will come down into your system with a Microsoft type of, of lead or contact. And so if you're syncing everybody, it can be just a single campaign that is that straightforward. And then um, in the flow steps, you can sync the person. You can sync people to Dynamics as a lead or as a contact. Um, and so then you would decide, are you syncing them as a lead? Are you syncing them as a contact? And then you could also sync them to specific users. So some people have rules such as regional or geographic components where they say, anyone in these countries or in this region has to go to this person and so on and so forth. Other people just sync them to a general processing queue where they would then go through the routing that happens on the dynamic side. And I'll touch on the routing in a moment. Um, other people, if for some reason their data model does not uh, support the one-to-one -one sync and they only want to sync in certain scenarios, then you may have additional um, smart campaigns. So you may sync people who fill out the contact us form. You may sync people who reach the scoring threshold, which indicates that they're a marketing qualified lead. You may sync them if they reach a certain stage in your life cycle or they reach um, a certain status inside of a program. So then you would have different smart campaigns for each of those components. You could possibly put in triggers for all those different ones. I do like to keep them separate also because um, if there's any issues with any of the triggers firing, then um, you're able to diagnose those. So they're all in one program, but there could potentially be multiple smart campaigns that are syncing people to Dynamics. Um, and then avoid using that flow step elsewhere. Um, it can be hard to locate where that flow step is in use and say the, um, say you did have rules in who syncs to which user or to which queue um, that are used on the Marketo side for the Dynamics sync. Um, it can take a lot more time to update those campaigns and locate those campaigns. So, Centralizing that is, is a lot easier. So routing, we recommend keeping the routing in Dynamics. So we would want Dynamics to be the system of record for lead routing and assignment. It's definitely better equipped for this task. Um, in Marketo today, you cannot change the owner of someone um, once they've been synced over to Dynamics. Uh, so say, for example, someone has new data points that have been filled in on their record and it warrants the fact that they should now be reassigned to a different salesperson. Um, that routing has to happen on the dynamic side today anyways. So we recommend keeping all of the routing. Um, one workaround that could be leveraged if you do need to change the ownership, um, what you could do is you could have a smart campaign in Marketo where if someone meets certain requirements, 
Um, you could use a custom field that is synced between the two systems to indicate who that new owner should be, and then use a workflow in Dynamics that runs when that field is changed to assign the record to the person named in the custom field. Programs and campaigns. So as many people are probably aware, when using the native connector between Marketo and Dynamics, the campaign sync is not supported like it is with, um, with Salesforce. So when using the native connector, you cannot sync your Marketo programs with Dynamics campaigns. If you require this functionality, you would have to use a third party tool to manage the sync. So we do recommend that a third party tool be used. Um, in our experience, it has been a more stable and scalable solution for handling the sync between campaigns um, and also takes the burden off of having to maintain um, certain scripts or processes and things like that. Um, another workaround could be that if you're using the native connector and you have Marketo and you have uh, Sales Insights, what you could do is now if you don't need to have a complete sync of the program membership and and all you really want sales to be able to do is invite people to campaigns or be able to trigger emails to people um, you can have you can have emails that are available to msi but what you can also do is have um, request campaigns in marketo that are triggered off of the um, request campaign functionality where the campaign is requested from Sales Insights. And then that way, those campaigns are available in the Sales Insights um, section in Dynamics to the sales reps where they could request those triggered campaigns that would then perhaps send the invite email to the person that they wish to event, um, invite to the event. Um, the other thing as well is you could have a filter on those campaigns that says that the person can only flow through the campaign if they're already, um, if they are not a member of that program to avoid that person receiving multiple emails inviting them to the event that look like they could be uh, the same email message. Um, so if you have MSI and really all you need to do is be able to enhance some of the functionality that your sales reps need in terms of being able to um, send email invitations and you don't need that full um, you don't need that full view of having all of your program data and your campaign data in Dynamics matched up together. Um, that could be another approach that we have seen some people take uh, to enhance the functionality that salespeople do have. And with that, I'll give it back to Hillary. Okay, hey, thanks, Lindsay. So now we're actually going to have a quiz, and this quiz will give you a good gauge to see if you are currently syncing data with the best methods between Dynamics and Marketo. So what will happen is I will launch the poll to answer the questions. And this quiz is out of a total of 100 points. And if you can say yes, to the answer that I'm going to ask you, give yourself 10 points for each yes, and it has to be a confident yes, and then tally it up and I will tell you your results at the end. So I'll launch the first poll question here, and it is, do you have a central sync campaign to manage records syncing to your CRM? So select one of the following, yes or no if you have a centralized sync campaign and i'll give you a few seconds to vote here Great, so we're we're looking pretty split right now um, between yes and no, and um, so give yourself 10 points if you said yes, and I'll launch the next question. So the next question is, have you reviewed and customized your fields with field blocking? Yes or no? OK, 
Okay, I'm moving to number three. Were you selective when choosing which fields to sync to Marketo from your CRM? Yes, would be 10 points for that too. And it looks like everyone was selective, so that's great. Number four, are you careful when merging people in your CRM? Yes or no? Number five, do you have a defined process to handle records deleted from your CRM? Number six, do you sync all records from Marketo to your CRM? So that's the, do you have a one-to-one -one sync? Next one is, do you have a central sync campaign to manage records syncing to your CRM? Something that we see really helps with that performance. This is another one. So do you batch your list uploads and use a masked list import engine? So being intentional with uploading your lists, yes or no? Are you careful and deliberate with mass data updates? Yes or no? Scheduling them after hours, being intentional when you do them in batches. Great to see most people are very intentional and deliberate with this. And now our last question is about lead routing. So is lead routing managed in your CRM? Yes or no? So all these questions related to those different categories, you know, to manage those tips to address these common sync issues. And that was the final question. So you could do your tally out of, um, you'd have your tally out of 100 points total. And I'll tell you the results. So how do you measure up? If you received uh, more than 80 points, by saying yes, you are a sinking superstar. If you were between 50 and 70 points, you're slightly synced, but 
we believe in you, you can get to a sinking superstar by just rolling out some of the tips you learned today. And then less than 40 points is a sinking student, but don't worry, you can get to be a sinking superstar someday as well. So now, Lindsay, would you like to conclude today? Of course. <clears throat> we'll run through a quick summary and then we'll get into questions. So the dynamics to Marketo Connection is unique and very powerful, as we've seen uh, throughout the conversations today. It is very customizable uh, for your business needs. We have seen a lot of different customizations and different uh, objects and usages uh, when it comes to people who are using dynamics in Marketo. When syncing data from your CRM to Marketo, please remember the tips for field management, duplicates, and slow processing. And just a reminder that reaching data harmony is definitely closer than you think. Okay, great. Thanks for that. Um, okay, yeah, you know what? You could keep it on your screen there, Hillary. Mm -hmm. um, that works. Um, so let's get to the questions. Uh, there are about a million questions here. So apologies to those who don't get your questions answered on air. Uh, but let's go through uh, some of them. So the first question here is, how is Marketo scoring synced with lead and opportunity scoring in DCRM, and how does it all work together with the DCRM lead and opportunity predictive scoring? What are the benefits and limitations? So the, uh, the lead and opportunity predictive scoring in Dynamics is specific to Dynamics. Um, it is part of the Dynamics AI uh, piece, and so depending on how it's configured, or at least to my understanding, depending on how it's configured, um, because each person can kind of set up like what their rules are and things like that for the predictors and, and that sort of thing, um, it's an indicator of like how likely that person is to uh, convert or how likely you would be to win that opportunity. Um, it is different than Marketo scoring. Marketo scoring is based on activities and things like that that you define in Marketo and would pass the information, like you would have the, um, the scoring field synced uh, between the two instances so that you can see what the, the person's score is. On the Marketo side, you also have the um, relative urgency and relative priority. So you're able to see um, the speed at which that person's score has accelerated compared to the rest of your database in Marketo, as well as the um, as well as the um, the recency of it. So if um, if someone has a score of 105, um, their urgency level is going to be higher um, if that score was calculated more recently, as opposed to if their score is 105, but they haven't had a score update in six months or so. Um, so the school on the market piece in Dynamics are, to my knowledge, separate separate components. And on the Dynamics side, it can be. And when I say that, I mean they're they're separate items, but the thought process behind some of them could be similar. So on the Dynamics side, it can be a combination of like emails and touch points and and things that are on the lead or the opportunity records in Dynamics, um, but the connection between that and Marketo um, isn't necessarily like a direct um, connection between the information um, because the information in Marketo is based off of like the Marketo or sales emails being sent and web pages and that sort of thing on the Marketo side and the uh, dynamic side would be based on like emails being sent through Dynamics and those types of things. Okay, great. Thanks for that. Um, we'll just keep moving here. Next question is, how best to manage contacts that are tied to multiple accounts in Dynamics? Currently, we're intentionally creating duplicates as our workaround, but as you can see, that creates a lot of issues. Yeah, I can take that one. So as we spoke about today, well, we do recommend that or we know that duplicates can create issues between the two systems. But we are aware of their specific use cases where you would need to have intentional duplicates. There are some other ways to explore 
the sync between the two systems using custom entities and custom objects to be able to assign people to multiple accounts. So you can potentially have a custom entity that would help you to achieve this without having intentional duplicates in your Marketo instance. And I'd be curious to see if you've explored that as a solution. Thanks, Hillary. And, and, um, oh, go ahead, Lindsay. I was just going to say, and one thing to be aware of there is um, sometimes the custom object versus the um, intentional duplicate conversation also comes from how you need the data to be used when it comes to dynamic content or um, leveraging tokens inside of assets in Marketo because um, if it's not a person like a, a field that's on a person record or um, the like the the opportunity like the, the what I would refer to as like the standard object so like lead contact opportunity account um, and you need the information from a custom object in an email for example um, you would have to then involve velocity scripting in order to pull that information in. So often, like there's there's pluses and minuses to a bunch of different approaches. Um, but we do we do also work with a number of people who do have intentional duplicates as part of their data model, and um, we understand it's definitely sometimes necessary. But it does it does create a little bit more of a headache when creating campaigns. Okay. Yep. Um, next question here is, what are the best practices for syncing Marketo and Dynamics when the server is on-premise or on-prem and we have to use integration software to bridge the gap? So I would say that there's a lot of best practices that were, were peppered in with the presentation today. Um, definitely, I think one of the key things is if you are using a third-party tool to connect to Dynamics and Marketo, the data dictionary, I, I really can't stress enough how important the data dictionary is for understanding the what is what information is syncing between the two systems and what fields are mapped together. Um, so the data dictionary is something that I definitely think is extremely beneficial in those environments. Um, and the other thing too when using the data layer is there's a lot of documentation that's really helpful on the developer site from Marketo um, that has uh, tips and input for um, writing the like the different solutions and things like that because you do want to make sure that you aren't um, aren't uh, going and, and burning through your API calls per day um, because it's not using the native connector, the third party tool will leverage the API for making those updates. Um, so making sure that the packages are, um, are done so in a way that doesn't cause the number of API calls to skyrocket. Um, when you are doing your initial sync between Marketo and Dynamics and you're using a third party tool, um, you could also request uh, put in a temporary request to Marketo to have your API limit raised um, for a week or two while you're doing that initial sync because you will have uh, probably a greater number of API calls going into the system as you will be moving over quite a bit of data. Um, so that's something that we've also done um, with clients who are using a third-party tool to connect the two systems um, just as like a temporary solution when doing that initial sync between the two. Okay, thanks for that. Uh, next question here is about managing duplicates. What about CRM records that are of no use in Marketo, for example, leads with no email address? So those are ones where um, custom sync filter might be something that is beneficial. So um, what we have worked on with some clients is um, if you have people that do not have an email address, what you could do is say like only sync to on the market, like only sync to Dynamics if they have an email address, um, and then same on the Marketo side, like you could have on the Dynamics side, you could have a workflow that um, changes the uh, the sync to Marketo field to true or, or true or false, yes or no, allow or do not allow, um, based on, on the presence of the email field. So you could use a sync filter to control that piece. Um, another another solution could potentially be um, sometimes we see with list imports that people get added to the system and they don't have email addresses. Um, 
some people just have um, a, a smart list that listens, uh, will pull in those records with empty email addresses and they just do, they have like a nightly batch that runs to remove records that don't have emails. Once again, though, if you remove them in Marketo, you would have to remove them manually in Dynamics. So there's a couple of different approaches, um, such as just removing them from both systems once you've seen that they are entered. Um, if they are in Dynamics and they need to be in Dynamics, but they don't have an email address and you wouldn't be marketing to them through Marketo, then that is where a custom sync filter could potentially be your friend. And then once the email field is added to that record, then there could be a workflow on the Dynamics side that just says, Email address has changed, uh, previous value was empty, new value is not sync, uh, changed the sync to Marketo field to allow, and then that person could then pass down to Marketo because the information is available. The one issue there, though, is the fact that you might possibly have that person in Marketo because they filled out a form. Um, you may have their email address, so that's a bit of a gray area, but it is because you only have their email address maybe in one system and not the other. Um, that is um, something that just it could potentially happen. Okay, thanks for that. Um, we'll take a, a few more here. So we still have a couple minutes. Um, here's the next one. If you have an existing Marketo instance and switch to Dynamics, can you sync with contacts that exist in both systems, or do you need to process and dedupe the duplicate records? Sorry, can you repeat the question? I want to make sure I've captured all the details from that one. Sure. Um, so if you have an existing Marketo instance and switch to Dynamics, can you sync with contacts that exist in both systems, or do you need to process and dedupe the duplicate records? Okay, switching to Dynamics, or like, would it be switching to Dynamics from another dynamic? Like, I'm guessing, I'm guessing from, they, like, yeah, I'm guessing they, they mean, yeah, I, I couldn't say. <laughs> it could be a different CRM, or it could be like, for example, if you're going from like one instance of Dynamics to a new one or on-prem to uh, cloud. Um, so, it, need more information for that one? I might need more. Um, one of the things is um, we always recommend that if you're going to be putting, uh, like, so for one thing, um, you ha if you have your existing Marketo instance, um, people will live in Marketo as, as leads or as Marketo views them as persons. Um, so on the Marketo side, they would technically um, in Marketo, be leads or persons. Um, the one thing is also, we, then you get into this conversation of um, if you're keeping if you're keeping that database or like um, what is happening, like if you're moving from one Dynamics instance to another, or if you are um, if you have Marketo now but it's not connected to Dynamics, but then you're connecting to Dynamics um, down the road. Um, I always recommend doing um, any sort of, of duplicate cleanup. Um, I feel like it warrants a, a little bit more discovery in order to say what the best approach would be. Also, because a lot of people have um, different reasons for having um, duplicates or certain records, or you may have people where, as mentioned, like in Marketo, they're not technically contacts, but say you only use the contact object and not the lead object in Dynamics, then um, all of those people in Marketo um, would technically be seen as contacts. Um, if it, you could do two different things, but also the way that we would recommend you do this would vary based on certain situations and certain information. Um, some people might push all those people from Marketo into Dynamics if the new Dynamics instance is empty. But if you have records in both places and you're trying to make sure that you won't end up um, with duplicates, then the um, then the best approach gets a little bit murkier and is something that we typically discuss on a on a case by case basis um, because there's always going to be certain things. There. Yep, no problem. There's a very sim well similar question here is. Um, 
about universal syncing from DCRM to Marketo um, from someone that hasn't been doing it so far. Consequently, some records in DCRM may be leads, some contacts. How do we best manage this when Marketo flow step requires us to specify which state to sync, leads or contacts? So um, if, the person, if the person was already in Dynamics, um, they would sync down based on the type that they are in Dynamics. So they would sync down as a contact or a lead. Now, in Marketo, it would be syncing people over to Dynamics that are new and that have not um, synced to Dynamics. So once a person is already synced to Dynamics, that um, that sync whether and it so someone would have synced to Dynamics if they were synced manually by being pushed over from Marketo to Dynamics or if they came down from Dynamics. So essentially, really only in Marketo you can do that one time because you can't reassign someone. So the sync to Dynamics flow step technically only gets used once per record. Once that person is is synced, they're synced. Um, if you have certain criteria, so say for example. Anytime someone has a specific combination of fields and they should be synced over as a contact, um, then you could have that criteria as part of your centralized sync campaigns. So for example, if you, most of your people are leads, what you could also do is have two separate smart campaigns like sync as lead, sync as contact. And then that way, like you have the different criteria spelled out. And then in the flow step, you would say like sync and then define if they should go to a certain user or whatnot and have them sync over as the correct type. Um, if you're doing the conversions between leads and contacts, like sometimes, um, the most often times I've ever seen people synced to Dynamics from Marketo as a contact is because that particular client only uses the contact entity, they don't use leads or they, they only sync contacts between Marketo and Dynamics. They don't sync leads. Um, so it's one, once again, it's one of those scenarios where like it, it, kind of, it kind of depends. There's a lot of different options um, on the approach, um, but you could have predefined criteria and just split them into two separate smart campaigns where this is the logic for one smart campaign contains the logic for syncing someone as a lead and one um, for syncing them as a contact. Okay, thanks. Uh, we do have, um, again, a million questions here. I'm really sorry we can't get to all of them. We'll take one more um, before we finish up. Um, and by the way, when we do finish up, please make sure you fill out the, um, the exit survey when the screen closes. It uh, helps us plan our uh, next webinar. In any event, uh, final question here. Following up on having Marketo Sales Insight campaign information in the CRM, is there a recommended way to create CRM campaign records from the campaigns in MSI and link leads to them? So the question, is there a recommended way to create CRM campaign records from the campaigns in Sales Insight and link leads to them? Any takers? There, <laughs> um, poss possibly, um, it, it could be possible, um, perhaps maybe like if the last interesting moment contains a certain value that there might be a work flow in Dynamics that would take that person and then assign them to a campaign. But it's also important to note that that last interesting moment field is going to constantly be updated as the person completes actions where like an interesting moment would be logged. Um, typically for the, for the, like the, the most stable approach we've worked on for the campaign sync is to use a third party tool. Um, so yeah, I mean, it's not something that we've, that we've tested out. Um, so I, I can't really say with certainty. 
Okay, yeah, no problem. Um, Hillary, do you mind going to the next slide for us? So, um, yeah, I just wanted to thank everyone for joining us today. I feel like we've covered a lot of ground. Thanks again um, to both of you, Hillary and Lindsay. Um, for those interested, our next webinar will be coming up in December, I believe on the 11th, but don't quote me on that. We'll be sending out an email um, with details as well after the webinar today, uh, some point later today or tomorrow, we'll send out an email with a uh, link to the, to the recording and the slides. So thanks again to, to everyone for joining and um, we'll speak to you again soon.